Most fuses are very simple things. A thin piece of copper wire soldered inside a non-conducting tube made of something like glass or a ceramic. This simple safety device is fitted into the live wire just after the switch in the circuit. The diameter of the wire is just sufficient to allow the normal current to flow through the circuit. If too much flows, then the thin wire, as the weakest link, will melt, switching off the circuit. In the UK, as in many other countries, there is a fuse incorporated into the plug, and many electronic devices have fuses within them. The simplest way to check a clear glass fuse is simply to look at it. If it's discoloured or if the wire's broken, then it's no good. Otherwise, you can check it with the multimeter if you have one, or if not, they're cheap enough, just throw it away. Fuses are a cheap, simple, effective and very reliable safety device. Here I have a lamp and an electric heater plugged into an extension bar. The current to these devices is monitored by this meter. It's the centre reading which is important. 0.21 amps as the light is switched on, then as the fan comes on a little more, and then as the heater elements are switched in, the current rises to nearly 4 amps and then over 7 amps. Revealing the wiring in the plug, you can see that the extension bar is protected by a 13 amp fuse. Changing this for a 3 amp fuse, we will switch the devices on as before. At a low current, obviously everything is fine. As the heater is switched on, at 4 amps, surprisingly, the fuse does not melt. When the current rises to 7 amps, there is a pause and it melts switching the circuit off. You can see that the stated values for the fuse are rather rough and ready. Checking the blown fuse with a meter, quite clearly the resistance is very high or infinite because the wire is melted. There are many different types of fuse. If you could know fuse box, perhaps a bit like this, then inside there will be fuse cartridges which have to be wired individually. The wire is screwed between the two terminals. This fuse wire is thin copper wire. The thickness determined empirically to allow sufficient current to flow, but no more. Most small vehicles or cars have auto fuses such as these, colour coded by size. In the UK, there are a range of colour coded fuses for plugs. And one of the examples of specialist fuses are these slow blow fuses. They won't melt if there is a brief surge. If you have to replace a fuse, the best thing is almost certainly to put in one of the same size that came out. But if you have to calculate it from scratch, you can do it like this. Use the power of the machine or device, and that's generally given in watts or possibly kilowatts. A kilowatt is a thousand watts. The voltage is important. A fuse must be able to cope with the voltage within the country you're using it. In Europe, that's 230 volts, as it is around most places in the world. In the US and a few other countries, a lower voltage is used, 120 volts in the US. The maximum allowed voltage is shown somewhere on the fuse. And machines generally have the power in watts and the voltage in which they're running printed somewhere on them. This vacuum cleaner is a maximum of 1200 watts, working at 230 volts. The connection between power, voltage and current is simply power equals voltage times current, as an equation using P equals V times I. If we rearrange this then, the current is power divided by voltage. Remember that the power of this machine is 1200 watts. So the current is going to be 1200 divided by 230. Using my fantastic new advanced scientific calculator, that turns out to be, to two significant figures, 5.2 amps. Now the standard sizes for plug fuses here are 3, 5 and 13 amps. A big gap between 5 and 13, but 5 would clearly be not sufficient so a 13 amp fuse is fitted.
The fuse does not protect against a small surge in current, but will protect against a catastrophic overload. Just quickly returning to the calculation. In the US, the voltage is only 120 volts, so that would be 1200 divided by 120. An easy calculation, fortunately, 10 amps. In that case, therefore, the fuse size would have to be perhaps 15 or 20 amps. For a second and last example, a steam iron, nominally 2800 watts, backed up by the formal statement underneath the iron. So, this steam iron has a power of 2800 watts. At 230 volts, that would give it a current requirement of 12.2 amps, that is, to the three significant figures, probably requiring, therefore, a 13 amp fuse. In the US, that would be about twice as much. So, just over 23 amps, a 25 amp, or possibly a 30 amp fuse. Thank you for watching.